Hello and welcome to another vlog in fact, um, I'm Bill and today I'm kind of showing off my metaprogramming tool. This year I kind of gave myself a New Year's resolution where every personal project that I make that has to need, that needs performance must be done in C. Because I'm trying to see if I can completely get rid of C++ and I pretty much can now. Um, I've been developing this meta tool so I can do some metaprogramming within C. So first off, the first thing I did was first, it took me about two hours to add introspection and introspection for structures and enums. So let me just explain what I mean by that. So let's go to one that's got a bit of introspection on already. Let's go to, I don't know, uh, world. Here we go. So I said to put introspection on this cloud system and introspection on this entity. Um, all that got is, is a keyword called introspect, and that's it. Nothing else, nothing special about it whatsoever. So when it does it, it goes, here's the structure. Um, get me all the values and names and all that stuff and information of that introspect, that structure. It does the same for entity here as well. Um, this is completely bad garbage code that I just made up, by the way. It's just a test program, really. Um, where else is there? Where else is there? Game. Yeah, I've got introspection on the game state as well. Uh, because as you can see, I have to specify the type first. So it's type def struct thing. And then otherwise, the introspection is like, I don't know the name of this structure. It's anonymous. Sorry. So, okay. It's got to do that. So then when that does, it goes through the code, reads the inspection, and then it generates that code. So the first thing it does is it saves all the meta types. So in here, you got game memory, you got B32, so Boolean game world, um, vec2, an entity type, these are all the stuff that's been saved within here. And again, you can see they're all unique, there's none been copied. So that's the first thing it does. The second thing it then does is then it generates all the meta information code. So I haven't got one for, uh, I'll just do for the structures first, I'll explain, I'll, I'll do one with a test for the enums and you'll see what happens. Um, as you can see here, the first thing is it stores the type. Then it stores the pointer, so if you want to see what it actually does, here's the information. Yes, that's point account, the name of the member, the is it array, uh, that should be a, a B32 actually to think about it, and they should be U32s, thinking about it, yeah, there we go. And that's an array count, and then that's the offset within the memory. And I think that should also, just leave it, should be a in pointer, that should be as well, not size T. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just um, leaving everything I need to be. So yeah, there's the offset in bytes and whatever. Good. That's what it stores. So it's very useful, and if you know what introspection is, this has got um, numerous amounts of uses. And you can see well, there's probably some highlight code for in a minute. So let's find an enum that's got um, actual stuff on it. So let's go back to the world. Here's an enum. <clears throat> so I'm going to put introspect. Make sure I have to specify the name because otherwise it's anonymous. It doesn't like anonymous things. Go back to the generated code and oh look, here's the enum. So it adds, gives me the value of the enum and its name. So when sometimes you're debugging, you've got the value of an enum, but you, it's just a number. And you, sometimes you just want to see what the name is. It's so I can just go like that. Print. Done. Some easy debugging. And most of this, literally, all the introspections for is debugging. Nothing else. Um, well, you can use it for many other things as well, but the main reason I will use it for is debugging, so I can inspect like an entity that's on the screen. I want to say, can you find me all the, the how fast is it going, and just all just thing, and I don't have to write this out for each member. It does it automatically, so that's the kind of nice thing about it. It just works. So that's the first thing, introspection. So the second thing now is code generation. So if you were noticing here, so where's, I've got meta generator there, meta generator source, I've got buffer. Now buffer is a thing I've defined in the meta tool, which is a generic type, and it literally has this shape, it has, it's saying it's a buffer, and it's got a name, and which expands out to the name underscore buffer, that's all it means. And then it's going to have the data inside, and its count, and its capacity, so it's literally a buffer, so store up, here's some a pointer to the data, here's the actual count you've stored, and here's the capacity, so it's a kind of a fixed array with a kind of a moving count. It's very useful, a buffer. Um, I use this for the draw group code. So in here, this is how you declare it. So once you've actually just, this is the first time we've got to declare it, and you've got to declare it in your header files. So it says struct 
draw command struct draw vertex. So very simple. It's going to put the struct in there. Says ah, it's a struct. And then the buffer thing says ah, this is the name. But then here's its internal type. Because draw index is a type def and not a um, structure, I have to specify the internal type because this meta generally thing is included before everything else. That's all it is. It's everything is included before everything else. So I can't use it yet. So as well as the actual structures, it also generates the code. So here's all of the code that's generated. And it may seem a bit, oh, what, what does that even mean? Let's just see it in example. So here we go, some code. So init, init buffer. And then I say, here's the type of the buffer we are, and then put the parameters in. So it's a bit like um, C++ templates, where explicit templates, where you'd kind of do that, wouldn't you? Dot, dot, dot. But in this case, it's still via the C code, and it still works. So that's very useful. And you can see you've got a clear buffer, you've got a append, you've got a append, a append array of stuff, and stuff like that. It's ex extremely useful. So there you go. It works. So that's it. I've got code generation and inspection. And my next now one I'm, I've actually just implemented. It took me about two hours just because I can't add up. I literally forgot to add one to something and it was just so oh, stupid. I, don't worry. Um, is I've now got code insertion or code um, uh, injection or whatever you want to call it. Literally, I can write code that's not valid C code. This metaprogramming tool will replace it, pass it into the compiler, then replace the backup. So here's an example of valid C code now. And you may think, what the hell? So right, if you've ever programmed in Go or uh, Dlang or whatever, you have kind of heard of d defer or scope exit. Now in Go it's slightly weird, but it, where it, it calls the statement at the end of the function, but the one I want is at the end of scope. So this acts more like scope exit in Dlang. So what it does, it goes through the code and says, ha, here's a, here's a statement I've got, defer this statement. And what it does is it adds it to the end of every, uh, of the end of its scope and the end of every early return. So if return is called early on, like here, this statement will still be called here before anything else. And it acts like a stack as well. So this stack one is called is put in first, but it'll be called last. This is then going to put in second, but then it's going to be called first in a sense. So that's a test that allows me to see if it actually worked. And what it does is it outputs, saves the actual file as a backup, modifies this code, puts that into compiler, and then restores the backup is all it does. Nothing special. So now I'm going to show you in real code that I have written, and this is for my graphics code, and this is in um, here, loading a sh shader. So this is a love it and file systems. And what I'm going to just do is, yeah, just do that, keep it as that. So what you go is, here's open a file. So file, open file, defer close file. <sighs> open file, defer close file. If it doesn't open the file, then you've got an error. But the thing is, this closing of the file still happens at that return statement. So if this happens, this thing still gets closed. This is now kind of a replacement for RAI in C++, and actually it's more versatile as well. So if we go down, I've even used it here for open gel code. It's very useful, for instance, um, creating a shader, check to see if it got created else, delete it, and defer the deletion. It doesn't matter if you return early, it still gets deleted. And this packs up. And also this defer code can also do block statements. So this block of code can be deferred. It's perfectly fine. So if I just gonna click save and build, you can see the code it's jet put in, it's inserted some code, it's horrible code, <laughs> and then it just rebuilds it. And yeah, it's fine. It's, it takes oh it took oh the meta tool takes about oh, 0.1 second, if that. So it's not even a problem with my compile times. And it's a bit slow for my because I'm recording and I've got other things on. So it's it's usually about 0.9 seconds to do the meta tool, the Unity build, and the other build. So three compilation builds plus the tool. It's stupidly fast. So I'm pretty happy that I've got all the functionality now that I had in C++ and more. 
because I could have had the dis I could use defer it was a horrible macro that required C++11 and wasn't very efficient and yeah I'm happy it works so I'm, I'm pretty clever I'm, I'm going to see if I can add any more constructs to the language if I can with the meta tool I'm not sure what I actually need um, I may have think of may just cleaning up the meta tool which make it a bit more generic so I can use it in other projects if I needed to and also probably um, make it so you can just write some code in like a instead of a C file header file you put like a dot met meta file to read that they like would meta definitions and then it will put them into your code so by default your meta definitions won't be there will be similar C code but they'll have like a meta prefix to them or whatever I haven't really decided yet this is again is pretty much designing your own language which I've uh, I've done before but not very good at it <laughs> oh, so thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next videos the intro to C videos I've been a bit delayed I've been a bit busy lately and I've not had actually time to record. I'm mean, going to have to record this 10 minutes, but this, the intro to see videos take a bit longer than that. So thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the next video.